Welcome to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. I'm Jennifer Sheehan. Today's show, we're going to talk about miracles. Luke 18, 27 says, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. God's given me many miracles in my life. I can't even count them all, and I'll share one of them at the end of the show. Today, I would like to introduce you to you, Christina and Michael Perrin. Thank you so much You're for welcome. coming on the show today. So you guys have some miracles to talk about. I'm very excited about that. So tell me um, why and what made you start using drugs, Michael? You know, for me, it was, uh, the why is a really good question. For me, the why was my identity. I didn't understand who I was. I didn't understand um, the purpose in life. I didn't understand all of the various, uh, I guess, elements of why I existed. And so I was searching for meaning, I was searching for importance, I was ser searching for validity. Right. And the way that I found that initially was through the use of drugs and alcohol. So about the age of 16, I started drinking alcohol and that turned into uh, the use of drugs like um, ecstasy and smoking marijuana. And that went on for a number of different years. Right. But it was this constant battle that I had of I knew the tr truth, I knew morality-wise what was true, but I didn't have the power, I didn't have the authority to stop agreeing with the lie right. that my identity was found in drugs and alcohol. Wow. So I've known you for a long time. How many years have oh, I known you guys? I think it was 16 or 17 years. A long time. Yeah. Because I've gone to Prestonwood now. We go to church together at Prestonwood Baptist Church. We I do. love our church. Um, for so many years. We've been going for 17 years now, and that's where I met both of you. So it's just an honor to know you guys. You are amazing people. And I really love to hear these testimonials of where people come from, mm -hmm. because it's very hard for people to connect with us and understand us where we're at now. I think it's very important to show where we've been and how we've gotten to where we are now with our faith. Mm -hmm. so, um, so you were addicted to drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. And then um, you two started dating. You started dating this beautiful Christina. Did she just say yes when you asked her out? Because I'm thinking she's a little more sassy than that. Well, uh, I'll <laughs> let her explain. She does a better job than I do. Well, it was a God story to begin with. Um, someone introduced us many years prior. And I had been through a, a really bad breakup. Okay. And my girlfriend said, I know someone who's really good at this stuff. And I was like, I am not interested. And she said, well, I, I think I'm going to call him and have him call you because you, you have some issues that, you know, just need a little talking to. And I said, so sure, great. And so he called one night and I was kind of licking my wounds. And he said, hey, I heard about what happened. Uh, any way that you, know, you could go out with me and we could talk about it when, it when I get home from where I'm traveling. And I was like, sure, I think I could pull myself <laughs> together because I had met him prior and really thought he was cute, and I knew he was after... What? Uh, you thought he was cute? I, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he was really after the Lord's heart. Right. And, and I was seeking that. Interesting. Um, I did hear about his TV workout show, and I was a little afraid, because I thought, I don't, I don't really want to date someone like that, because I'm afraid that they'll compare me oh, to someone with a perfect body. Right. And uh, he ended up taking me to church one night, and within three months, he asked me to marry him. Wow. And I was, I knew it was God's purpose for us to be together. Interesting. And so you both shared with me that you didn't know at the time that he was using drugs Correct. And, and alcohol. Correct. So how, how did that work out? When did you tell her? Well, you know, and that's part of the, the great part of the story. So even in the midst of knowing the Lord, even in the midst of coming into a relationship with him in 1993, I still had this back and forth nature that I battled. Um, the, the nature of who I thought people wanted me to be versus who I knew the Lord wanted me to be. And so finally in the summer of 1994, I just said, I abandoned God for once and for all, I thought, and went back into the world to do some more research. Thankfully, I came back in the summer of 98 and that's when we met initially. And it was at that moment that a woman who I'd never met before in a little church in downtown Dallas uh, said to the pastor that she believed that she had an encouraging word from God. And so in the midst of my addiction, I was sitting in the second to the last row of that church, and here comes this woman towards me, and I knew. You know how you just have that feeling? Yes. I knew that she was coming to talk to me. And she came over to me and looked at me. She was about 5'2", and pointed her finger at me, and she said, young man, God wants you to know that he is going to restore the years the locusts have eaten. Wow. You know, it was in that moment that the Spirit of the Lord hit me. Shortly thereafter, we began dating. 
But even in the midst of that, I still fell back into this lie. I knew I was delivered. I knew I was healed. But I wasn't able or willing, I should say, to do the things necessary to support that breakthrough right. that I had. And it wasn't right. until February 22nd of later on that year right. that I finally, for the first time in my life, got real honest. And right. I got honest with her. Because right. I realized that I couldn't bring this into the relationship that we had right. because it wasn't fair to her. Right. So you had no idea? No, I knew he struggled. But at the time of our engagement, two or three months of, of whatever that time was, I didn't know he had gone back. And he came to me. We had gone to look for a house, our first house, when we were going to be married. And I think the pressure of finding a house, he just realized, I can't go on like this. I have to be honest and get it right. right. He came to me one night and told me. And I remember falling apart and thinking, here we are about to get married, and right. now what do I do? And I remember praying to God, and the Lord specifically said to me, you stand by his side, and I will do the rest. Wow. Now, there are very few times where I've heard specifically like that from God, and that night, I could tell you where I was, and I heard those words, and I said, okay, let's roll up our sleeves. We went and got, sought godly counsel, right. and from there they said, we think you should go through this process, go through it with him. And a lot of people said, you know, you should be celebrating life. You should be, you're getting married. You shouldn't be dealing with drug addiction. And, and I said, no, this is real life. Right. And this is God's plan for us. I know I'm supposed to marry this man and we're going to walk through it together. I love it. And we went through a, a, a program uh, together. He was in it um, daily and I would go twice a week. And then after he graduated, we were married on May 29th, just wow. a, a month or so later. And how long have you been married now? 20 years this 20 May. Years. Yeah. It, so we're right at 20 as well. That's a long time. <laughs> it is. And amazing. You know, Christina brought up a real good point. There was a willingness that I had on my part to do what others were instructing me to do. They had the wisdom. They had the knowledge. Right. And I needed to support what they told me to do. Right. And then fast forward, and you have children. Mm -hmm. How many children do you have? We have three, three now. Three children, and you find out your child at seven years old has a brain tumor. Mm -hmm. So, wow, that is, that is heavy to know that your child has a brain tumor. Um, in the next segment, we're going to talk about uh, their son's brain tumor, how they found out, and what the surgeon said. We'll be right back. Today's extraordinary feat, Chris climbs stairs. This may look easy, but with severe back pain, it's impossible. Dr. Stephen Courtney and his team at Advanced Spine Center offer exceptional orthopedic care for neck and back pain. For more information on the latest advancements in minimally invasive spine surgery, call today, 972-499-5457. God placed on my heart 12 years ago to write a book of my life story. I said, no way. First of all, I don't want my painful past out to the public. Second of all, I'm a horrible speller. And third of all, I don't have the desire or time to write a book. He said, if it inspires one person, is it worth it to you then? I said yes and started writing my book two years ago. My book is the life story of me being born and raised in Southern California to a bipolar alcoholic mother that was married six times. My mother physically and mentally abused me my whole life. Then I joined the United States Army right out of high school. I spent four years in the Army, one year in Iraq, weapon specialist. This book will inspire you. I am so happy to come from where I've come to be where I am today. You can purchase Painful Victories on my website at thejennifersheehanshow.com. Imagine a global movement of people coming together to feed the hungry, to serve the poor, to celebrate. That day is coming. It takes a village to raise a kid and change the world. But today, we are more disconnected than ever. But our children still have the same problems. No self-esteem, no social skills, and lack of grit. As a teacher, the most difficult challenge we face is to teach kids who see no value in education. Ethos Village is a digital tool that engages kids, parents, and teachers. So we can engage parents and kids in a fun and entertaining environment. 
And this great curriculum is highlighted by experienced parents, professional athletes, and celebrities that tell the real life stories. Stories of struggle and success that show kids, parents, and teachers the sky's the limit. Visit www.ethosvillage.com. Join the village, Ethos Village. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. I'm with Christina and Michael Perrin. How did you first find out that your son had an inoperable brain tumor? Wow, that was a summer to remember. Um, he was beginning to get headaches and he was beginning to wake up nauseous, dizzy. The, we took him to the doctor, they were chasing different ideas around, oh, it's migraines, oh, it could be cryptosporidius that he picked up from a pool. And I had this gut reaction, this gut feeling that moms have. Right. I thought, no, something deeper is wrong. There's just something in my gut that tells me that. And he's seven, And right? he's seven, and I'll, I'm also, he's out of town when he really starts to get sick. When he comes back in town, I said, I don't know, something's wrong. And I start to see his ribs showing. So he's losing weight. Right. And our doctor was out of town at the time and he was on a two week vacation. And so I really trusted the pediatrician, but he wasn't there. And so when he returned, uh, we took him in and we had all sorts of different tests taken. And it was one day when we pulled up to the church and he looked at me and he said, mommy, I see two stop signs and I see two crosses oh, and I wow. see two white cars and I called Michael. Michael said, that's not good. Right. And so we took him in that morning. They did a, a, a huge amount of tests and I had the doctors calling us saying, get him to the ER now. Spinal tap, MRI, go. And we took our three-year-old at the time, Bella, and just handed her to a neighbor. We ran to the hospital. They did the test, and at 7 p.m., the doctor walked in and said, Michael and Christina, your son has an inoperable brain tumor. Wow. And my whole, my whole body shut down like a screen on a, on a computer, and it went black. And he sat there, and we sat there in silence with our son next to us. And I said, how big is it, and where is it? And he said, it's in between his eyes and in between your ears in between the nose and the head, and we can't get in there right now. Wow. And so, so what did you do? We prayed. Oh my God. You know, there was a moment in time where that we were on the third floor of the hospital, and in all honesty, there was a moment where both of us thought, you know, it would just be a lot easier to, uh, to jump off the third floor. Because in those moments of stress, in those moments where you don't know right. what the Lord is going to bring your way, we want to abandon life. We want to get rid of life and get rid of the circumstance by whatever means we possibly can. But in the midst of that, we received a word on our, on our way down to Children's Hospital that evening. And it was straight out of the Word of God. It's Isaiah 60, verse 1, which says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And that's what our verse was during the entire time of Grayson's uh, surgeries that he did have. And that's the miracle story. The miracle story yeah. was they said it was inoperable. So we went in for a resection of this brain tumor in an area that the doctor said she had never performed surgery before. After us all praying, I remember that day when I said, hey, I'm praying for you, brother. You know, countries were praying. Uganda, we had people in Uganda. We had people in China. We had people in, in England. We had all across the world, they had heard about what well, he was a minister and, oh, how could this happen to a minister? I remember someone grabbing us in the parking lot. How, how could this happen to a minister? And Michael said, how can it not? Why, why not? Right. We're going to be an example. We're going right. to show. Now, I was a little worried about that. I said, wow, you married someone with fear. <laughs> that was my middle name. <laughs> and I think that through this process, I really, really relied on God and who he is. And so in the middle of that, you know, on our way down, we received that verse, and I grabbed a guy that I know that I was discipling at the time, and I looked at him, and he was shaken, obviously, by the whole thing. And I said, listen, God's going to get us through this, and he's going to perform a miracle unlike any has ever seen. At the time, I was working at a church with about thirty to 40,000 people, and so all eyes were focused on us. Right. All the prayers were focused on us as well. And so we went through this surgery in which the doctor said she couldn't get 100% of the tumor. The tumor. Right. Every MRI <clears throat> after that moment revealed the fact that the entire tumor had disappeared oh. and it was completely gone in yes. the body. And Isn't so, right, God so great? Doesn't that just give you so much joy? 
And let us not forget, she told us, you know, there's a, there's a possibility, a strong possibility he could lose partial sight. Right. All None. of his sight, because we're going through the back of the brain. Right. She said, but we can work on that. We can fix that. And he's six foot four today, and wow. he has x-ray vision. Yay. People say, what does that mean? Well, he can see through walls. Right. His vision is so amazing that and still God no, did. No tumor, completely gone. No, it, we God just had his 10-year so MRI. There's nothing there. Praise God. Yeah, because God will return fourfold. Yes. Everything that we've I given love out. it. I love your faith. Thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your awesome testimonial. I Absolutely. appreciate you guys. Thank you for having us. And next we have um, an amazing 17 year veteran, Army veteran, who has been shot and lived in his car, been homeless, and just has such an amazing story. We'll be right back. I have always believed that trust is one of the greatest compliments someone can receive. When our clients trust our team to handle one of their largest financial decisions they'll ever make, we take that very seriously. Having been in the business for over 36 years, I know that trust does not come easily, it has to be earned. Our team is committed to providing the best real estate service possible with the ultimate goal of having a seamless transaction and as little stress as possible. Let us show you why we are the best in the business. The Jennifer Sheehan Show is about real people with real stories of redemption, miracles, pain, overcoming, and struggles. They're sharing their stories to inspire you and give you hope. We would love for you to partner with us and support us. The Jennifer Sheehan Show is now a 501c3. You can support us by going to thejennifersheehanshow.com and hitting the button donate. Thank you so much for your support. Imagine a global movement of people coming together to feed the hungry, to serve the poor, to celebrate. That day is coming. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. I have a special treat for you today. Another Army veteran, Casey McEwen. Hi, Casey. How you doing, Jennifer? Good. It's so good to have you today. Thank you for having me. And how long did you spend in the Army? 17 and a half years. 17 and a half years. You know, I made it to four years, and then they wanted me to stay in the Army, and I said, no, thank you, because <laughs> I wanted to wear makeup and high heels and my hair long. <laughs> but, um, and you were in Iraq. I was in Iraq for a year. How, didn't you do more than one tour? I did. I did two tours in Afghanistan. Wow. And what did you do in the military? Uh, I was an infantry platoon sergeant. Very good. So what, what did you think about the Army, and what, uh, what did you do exactly? You know, it was actually one of my biggest dreams to actually become a soldier. And Ew. right after high school when I joined, it, it's something that I wanted to be the best. I wanted to be a ranger. I wanted to be special forces. So I did everything I could to be that best soldier. So after 17 and a half years, I was medically retired after um, being injured in Afghanistan back in 2011. Right, so what happened when you got injured? So when I got injured, I was um, rendering aid to one of my um, comrades. and. I was struck in the back and immediately lost all feeling from my waist below okay. and wow. um, ended up in a hospital in Launchville, Germany and, tell, and I was being told that I was never going to be able to walk again. Wow. How did that make you feel? Well, knowing that my career was going to be over, knowing that now I was going to have to spend the rest of my life in a wheelchair, um, I, I was heartbroken. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, my test, my faith was very, t was tested and I was having those spiritual warfares going on because um, at the time I was saying, why me? Right. Why did this happen to me? You know, I had been faithful to God my entire life. Why was he putting me through this trial? Wow. So when you were paralyzed, what happened? Did they discharge you from the military then, or did they let you heal? How did that process? So as I transitioned back to the United States, um, I started going through a lot of occupational therapy, a lot, of, a lot of physical therapy to learn how to live my life in a wheelchair. And um, about six months later, I started getting what they call phantom pains, where your nerve endings start firing on different things. And it, it was like a burning sensation in different parts of my legs. Right. And they said that that's going to happen the rest of your life. And uh, the moment that I was actually able to get a little bit of um, 
little motion in my in my toes. Right. They were saying, okay, well, we're going to hold off for a little bit and we're going to see what, what's happening. Um, about two years after the attack, after I was injured, uh, I was I, I actually had full mobility of my legs, and mm -hmm. that's when we started to move forward and say, okay, well, we're going to do the physical therapy and the occupational therapy to learn how to walk again, to do all the things, to walk upstairs, mm -hmm. downstairs. And that must have made you feel so great to start feeling some feeling in your legs again. It was. Again. It was, and it was definitely God. Because the thing is, is while I was in the hospital, I kept, I would ask God on a, on a regular basis, why me? Right. You know, why is this happening to me? Um, and I just kept hearing the words, not yet. And I, I didn't understand it. And it was almost to the point where I had to divulge myself into the Bible to actually figure out what these words not yet would mean. And it came from James 1 where it was saying, consider all trials joy because there are bigger things in, in store for you. So for me, it was just what was next for me. Right. And then what happened after that? <laughs> That's when things kind of did took Did you meet I, someone wonderful? <laughs> I did, I did. But be, well, as we were getting there, um, I got transitioned out of the military, but I thought I was going to go off and do big things, much like yourself. But I had a hard time reassimilating into a civilian so, um, society. Right. And I found myself living out of my Jeep for about four months, trying, yeah. to, trying to reassert myself and figure out what I wanted to do. Right, and this was right before because you were in 17 years. 20 years is retirement, yep. right? So you planned on retiring in the I military. I planned on retiring and... Um, quite frankly, I became a number and, you know, two and a half years shy of being able to retire on my own. Wow. I was actually discharged out because then that way the DOD doesn't have to pay my uh, retirement for the rest of my life. So wow. I, I left with a huge chip on my shoulder, but then that's when I relied on those words, not yet. What was in store because there was something bigger in store for me. Um, and that's when I started working in the nonprofit community to take care of veterans that were going through the same situations that I was. And, you know, through happenstance, you know, I had been working with one nonprofit and I got honored by President Obama at the White House. Amazing. And for the work that I was doing with veterans. And what happened is the organization I was working for decided that they were going to send me on all these talking engagements. And they sent me on the very first Project Reload mission where the founder and myself, we became brothers instantaneously. Once that happened, he handed me the keys to Project Reload and says, I want you to run the organization. And then three months later, the, the special person you were talking about is we got a random email saying that they wanted to shoot a commercial with Project Relo. And my wife today was the stylist on the set. The moment I walked into uh, the fitting to get fitted for the suit for the shoot, immediately all, that, all those words of not yet came to fruition. And it was, this is why I was putting you through all those trials because I was, I was training you for this wow. moment right here. And she's amazing. God really hooked you up. Yes, she did. <laughs> at, the end, at the end of James 1, 1, 5, where it says that, you know, everything will be fulfilled and your life will be perfect and you will not unwaver. This is exactly why, because she is the reason and she is my everything. She is, she is my perfection. I love it. So now you've got a purpose, you have a job, Absolutely. and you have a wife. Yep. I'm thinking God's really hooked you up. <laughs> he has. And, 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 you know, to take it even a step further, when I, when I look at perfection, I don't look at fame, I don't look at fortune, I don't look at money, I don't look at any of that stuff. I look at what am I able to do to spread the gospel. And you know, when I moved to Frisco to, to be with my wife, I started going to Stonebriar Community Church where Chuck Swindoll is the senior pastor. <clears throat> and every, every week he would start talking about Dallas Theological Seminary. Dallas, every week is somewhere. In right, his and it was weighing heavy on your heart? It was weighing heavy on my heart, and now today I'm just finishing my first year of, of seminary school. So. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. That is amazing. So you're just learning more and more about how to be obedient to God and His Word. Every single day. And you've been healed. I have. And restored to turn around and help other people. So God really hooked you up. Tell us about Project Relo. So Project Relo is a national nonprofit organization that's dedicated to training corporate America on the value of hiring veterans. Instead of hiring veterans because it's the socially good thing to do, it's actually good for business. Wow. And they can learn more by going to projectrelo.org. Perfect. Thank you so much. Absolutely. We'll be right back talking about a miracle that God's given me. Today's extraordinary feat, Chris climbs stairs. This may look easy, but with severe back pain, it's impossible. Dr. Stephen Courtney and his team at Advanced Spine Center offer exceptional orthopedic care for neck and back pain. 
For more information on the latest advancements in minimally invasive spine surgery, call today, 972-499-5457. I'm all in. Are you? Imagine a global movement of people coming together to feed the hungry, to serve the poor, to celebrate. That day is coming. I've always believed that trust is one of the greatest compliments someone can receive. When our clients trust our team to handle one of their largest financial decisions they'll ever make, we take that very seriously. Having been in the business for over 36 years, I know that trust does not come easily, it has to be earned. Our team is committed to providing the best real estate service possible with the ultimate goal of having a seamless transaction and as little stress as possible. Let us show you why we are the best in the business. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. While I was in the Army, I married another soldier. Right away, he started cheating on me and then asked for a divorce. To say the least, I was devastated. I didn't get married to get divorced. After three years, I met a lady who asked me why I was so sweet and so cute and why I didn't have a husband and encouraged me to pray for God to send me a husband. So I made my list, I prayed, God sent me a husband, and now I've been happily married for 20 years. If you have not prayed to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, say this prayer with me. Jesus, I know you died on the cross for my sin. You rose again on the third day. Forgive me for my sin. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I would love to connect with you. Tell me what you thought about these wonderful stories. Go to thejennifershehanshow.com and follow me on YouTube. I can't wait to share more of these amazing stories next week on The Jennifer Sheehan Show. Thank you.